Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video, and in this video I'm going to be showcasing my entire collection of iPhones, iPads and Macs, including my desk setup, as well as showing you how I display them in a room tour style video. Starting things off with the most important part of my room, my desk setup, which is where I produce all of my YouTube videos. This setup is powered by a Mac Pro 5.1, which features at its heart two 3.46 GHz 6-core Intel Xeon processors for a 12-core 24-thread beast. But it doesn't stop there. This Mac is loaded with 64GB of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 with 4GB of VRAM. When it comes to storage, this Mac Pro packs a 500GB SSD, 4TB, 2TB and 1TB hard drives and an array of I.O. on the back. Connected to it are three 20-inch Apple Cinema displays. While these monitors aren't very high res, they have amazing color, but I am looking to upgrade in the future. Continuing on with the all Apple theme, I have an Apple numeric keyboard attached and an Apple Magic Mouse 2. On top of the desk, you'll usually find some external hard drives, my custom purple iPhone 6, a pair of AirPods, and an iPad Air 2. I also custom built this LED mouse pad, which not only looks great, but because of the massive surface area it has, it's great for editing. Behind the desk, it also features some LED strips, which look exceptionally good at night. Next to the Mac Pro is where I record all of my YouTube videos, but occasionally my MacBook Pro will sit there too. Moving up from the main setup, on the mantle you'll find my iPhone collection, the ones on the mantle being most of my boxed iPhones. Up here you'll find every iPhone from the iPhone 1st generation all the way to the iPhone 7, which I'm actually using to record this video. Now some of these iPhones I was lucky enough to find on their original iOS version, and some of them even come with their original box. From left to right we have a PowerBook 150, which doesn't work. I have an iPhone first generation, 8GB on iOS 3. I have an 8GB 3G on iOS 2.0, an 8GB 3GS boxed on iOS 6.1.6, .6, an iPhone 4 custom gold plated with transparent back on iOS 4.3.5, an iPhone 4S on iOS 5, 16GB, a 16GB iPhone 5 on iOS 6, a 16GB iPhone 5S on iOS 7, um, an iPhone 5C, 32 gig boxed with iOS 10.2.1, an SE boxed on iOS 11.2.5, and an iPhone 6 Plus 128 gigabyte on iOS 8.4.1. Along from that, you'll find some boxes as well as a working PowerBook G4 12 inch. Moving down a level, this is where I keep all of my iPhone 4S's and below. As you can see, I have an iPhone 4 and 4S on every version of iOS, as well as this random iPhone 3GS, which is running iOS 3.1.2 and it is a 16 gigabyte model. I did a restoration video on that, so I'll leave that linked in the description. But as for the iPhone 4s, we have one on iOS 4.2.1, another one on 5.0.1, I have one on 6.1.3, and I have two on iOS 7.1.2, one black and one white. As for the 4s's, I've got this one, which I did a restoration video on. This is a 4s 16 gigabyte running iOS 5.0.1. I have four iPhone 4S's on iOS 6, two of which are 64 gigabyte models. I also have a 16 gig on iOS 7.1.1. I have this one here, which has blobs for iOS 5, but it is currently running iOS 8.1.1. And lastly, I have a 4S on iOS 9.0.1. Moving down on another level is where I keep all of my iPhone 5s to the latest generation iPhones. So from the left here, we have a boxed iPhone 5 32 gigabyte, and that is running iOS 6.1.4, as you can see in settings. And due to this being a 32 gigabyte model, I was able to load it with a heap of games, apps, and music. Moving along, we have a custom red iPhone 5, which I did a video on. This is a 16 gigabyte iPhone 5, running iOS 8.4.1. Underneath that, I keep an iPhone 5 16 gigabyte, also running iOS 6.1.4. It does have a small crack in the screen, which I need to replace, but otherwise, all of my iPhone 5s running iOS 6 are in mint condition. Underneath that phone, I have another iPhone 5. This is a 64 gigabyte running iOS 10.0.1. And underneath that, I have a 64 gigabyte on iOS 8.4.1. Uh, it's a slate, so it has a couple of marks on it, but otherwise, it's in pretty good shape and is also jailbroken. Across from that, I have the $12.50 iPhone 5C, which is still running iOS 9.3.4, and is a 32 gigabyte model. It does have some big deep scratches on the back, which is a bit of a shame, but it still works. Across from that, I have my iPhone 6S. This is a 64 gigabyte 
running iOS 11.3.1. And underneath that, the last iPhone in this shelf is an iPhone 6, which I picked up for $20 on eBay. It's running iOS 11.2.5 and is a 16 GB model with broken touch ID. I also keep my Apple battery case here next to my iPhone 6 and 6S in case I ever need a battery case. Underneath that shelf is where I keep all of my iPads. Two of my best iPads, which are an iPad Air 2 128GB Wi-Fi and cellular running iOS 8.1.2 and an iPad 4th generation 32GB Wi-Fi running iOS 6.0. Also in my iPad collection, I have an iPad 1st generation, 32 gig Wi-Fi and cellular. I also have an iPad 2, 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi and cellular on iOS 6, as well as a boxed iPad 3, 32 gigabyte, and a boxed iPad 2, 16 gigabyte. Going down yet another shelf, this is where I keep all of my iPods. I don't have a massive iPod collection, although I'd like to get some of the iPod classics and things like that, but I do have an iPod Nano 5th generation and 6th generation which I both bought for $20, as well as an iPod Touch 6th generation, 16 gigabyte gold, which is still running iOS 8.4, and also an iPod Touch 4th generation, 8 gigabyte, which is running iOS 4.3.3. Next to that, I have an iPod Touch 1st generation. This has almost no scratches in it, and it's in really nice condition, and it's running some version of iOS 1. And behind that is a boxed iPod Touch 1st generation, uh, also a 16 gig, this one's running 2.2.1 uh, I believe again, uh, but it has a quite a number of scratches on the back. Now moving along from that mantelpiece, you'll find my bedside table, which contains an iMac G4. This is a top of the line 17 inch model with a 1.25 gigahertz processor and two gigs of RAM, but I also use this spot to charge my iPhone and other MacBook Pro. Moving along from that, I have some 90s boombox thing, uh, and underneath that is a stack of hard drives, a hard drive dock and an old uh, Apple Pro mouse. And underneath that, I have a heap of iPhone 3G and 3GS cases and skins, um, as well as my laptop bags are there. And across from that is actually a whole box full of third party cables and chargers and headphones and everything, which I just dump into that box there. Across on the other side of my bed, you'll find my other bedside table, which contains a couple of Macs as well as a heap of broken iPhones that I've got to fix. One of those Macs is my iBook G3 clamshell from 1999. Next to that is my 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro, which is a top of the line model from 2013. And that thing's packing a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte SSD. But on this bedside table, I also keep all of my broken or uh, need fixing iPhones. So that whole stack there are all iCloud locked, whether that's completely or they're just in settings. And the rest of these phones are actually phones uh, that I need to fix and repair up, even make a couple of custom phones out of or do a restoration video on. I've got an iPhone 6 here. This is a 16 gigabyte, which I picked up for 30 bucks. Advertised as iCloud locked, wasn't even iCloud locked. I just reset it and I was able to activate it just fine. I've also got some iPhone first generations, um, some 5Ss, this SE, um, and a couple of iPhone 4s. This one's on iOS 5.1, but you can see this has to be one of the poorest condition iPhones I've ever seen. It looks like someone's thrown it off a roof and then gone ahead and run over it with their car. Um, it's really, really bad shape. But I also have two iPhone first generations with cracked screens and dead pixels, which I want to fix up as well. Underneath that, in the first drawer, I'll find my ThinkPad, which I use for some jailbreaking tools um, and things like that. And in the second drawer is where I keep all of the parts uh, needed to restore those phones from before. I also have my battery and charger for that PowerBook 150. Now when it comes to iPhone parts, I have a lot of iPhone parts and I actually have a full video dedicated to showing you guys how I actually repair iPhones and all the parts and tools I use um, and how I store them and everything. So there's a full video to that. I'll leave that linked in the description um, if you guys are interested. Now. This isn't actually in my room, but out in my shed I have my entire box full of uh, Apple boxes. Now these are just boxes. Some of the things might have a couple of items in there, um, but as you can see I keep every box from every product I purchase. I also have a heap of these sealed iPhone 4 docks, um, which have never been opened. I also have a heap of iTunes gift cards, um, which have all been activated, but I always keep the card because they look pretty cool, um, and I just leave them here in this box. I also have a Apple Drive module from an early XServe 
um, which I got included with um, my actual XServe, which is an Intel XServe. I haven't used it, it's literally sitting underneath the lounge room TV, but I got this drive with it. It's an IDE drive itself, but um, the sled is actually different than my XServe, and it, I believe it's for a PowerPC XServe. Next up is my Nokia collection of phones. First up, we have a Nokia 6700S. This is a cool looking purple Nokia phone. Um, or keep in mind, all these Nokia phones I got for free, so I can't really complain what model they are, um, but they are cool to have in sort of a collection. This one here is a Nokia 2600. Uh, this one here is a Nokia 1100, and of course that thing's loaded with snake. And that of course is exactly why you gotta have some Nokia phones laying around in your phone collection. And then we have this one, this is a 5110, which doesn't turn on, it appears to be water damaged. And I also have two of these Nokia 610 Windows phones, which I also got for free. So this is it, the end result of my functioning iPhones, iPads and iPods. You can see just how many add up when you start putting them out on a table. This desk is 2.4 meters long and runs across one entire wall length of my room. But in saying all that, it's not very hard to fill this thing with iPhones, iPads, iPods, and other tech-related gadgets. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video, and a look at my desk setup, entire iPhone, iPod, and iPad collection, as well as some of my Macs. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, and consider checking out some of my other videos. Also, make sure you follow my social media, link will be in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.